this is something else, Steve said. Gable, wow. Gable has a, um, he's always had a mind of his own. My name is Gable Stevenson. You will never influence the world by trying to be just like it. You talked about the athleticism of Gable Stevenson. He's showing it. This is another grown man that can just push another grown man around the mat to a point where that guy just crumbles. Oh, wow. Switches to the other side and goes low. Wow, a lot of people are actually paying attention to wrestling and especially to me when I step out onto the mat. Well, you look at Gable Stevenson, he is showtime. Gable's an exceptional wrestler, but he also likes to entertain. He loves the crowd, the crowd loves him. And whether you love him or hate him, you're watching him. There's no respect when he wrestles with his opponents. Either you're gonna roll over for me or I'm gonna make you roll over for me. It looked like he was heading in a little bit of the wrong direction as far as unsportsmanlike, stuff like this, and I said, whoa, he's, he's new into this college wrestling. I think there's a line you don't cross, and he might have crossed a couple times. The match that he wrestled down in Iowa City last year, I said, score points and no garbage. There's going to be a penalty point against Stevenson for basically punching Cassiope. Goes out and whacks him inside the head, gets a point. Really? I felt like I had to bring a villain act to me to make things entertaining for other people to watch. Fort Dodge, Iowa, Thanksgiving, 99. We went out to watch the Hawkeyes. We kept on hearing that name, Dan Gable, Dan Gable, Dan Gable. My wife, she was like, I like that name Gable. How about Gable Dan? And she was like, I said, that sounds pretty good. When I was younger, I went to Dan Gable's museum. Dan Gable had a long line of people want to see him. Someone asked what my name was and I told him Gable. I go, wow, I appreciate that. You know, that's, I'm humble. He had a middle name and it was Dan. And all of a sudden, whoa, this is a first. When we were young, our older brother wrestled. Uh, so he kind of started the path for us. My brother John was eight years older than me and 13 years older than Gable. I always say our, our middle one, Bobby, he was the hard worker. Gable, he was always the one goofing off in practice. We were thinking, is this kid ever gonna, you know, get with it? John told him to do a backflip when he was probably about two or three. And I knew he hit the wall because my wife heard a big thud upstairs. In seventh grade, I was in social studies class, and the teacher said, Bobby, you're going home for the day. And I was like, what? I remember pulling up and walking upstairs and seeing my mom at the table crying. And I was like, what's wrong? Like, what's going on? She was like, it's John. And I was like, what happened? Like, did he get in trouble? Or, you know, did something weird happen? And she was like, no, he's dead. My life changed uh, drastically seeing the real side of how life actually is and how me being young and thinking that death isn't real, I seen him see him one day, then the next day, like it's never gonna happen again. Wrestling's been that healing process uh, with him, you know, so they never forget him. That was probably the starting point. I used to never take wrestling really seriously until I won the state tournament in high school my freshman year. I was a four-time state champion in high school. After my fourth state championship, I rounded it off and ended with a backflip. This one is in 17 rows! After that backflip video, a lot of things changed. My my name went from a rest, just a regular wrestler to being just a an athlete that people know. I mean, if Bob's coach in Iowa, and I got, is there a kid named Gable Dan? You know, I, I would probably think he should be wrestling for me. The whole wrestling community knew that Gable and I were pretty close, and wherever I would go, Gable would soon to follow. I talked being the four-time national champion and 
things go wrong, obviously. I lost my, my freshman year twice to Anthony Gasar. Good work. Good job. First to two. Yeah. And he goes ahead for a short time. Big Ten Championship, that final match, it was just like, what are you doing? We're only going to blame one person. That was Gable. That was his fault. You thought you were just going to walk out there and be Gable and think good things were going to happen to you. Well, you didn't make it happen. For somebody that's had as much success as he has, he still, under the brightest lights, had to, you know, suffer defeat, and that can be challenging. It showed me really his maturity and how important it is to bounce back. And the Gophers get a Big Ten champion. I think he realized nutrition, sleep, training, strength, like all those things do play an aspect of being successful at that level. At times he takes his foot off the gas. I think those days are behind him. That game with that Russell freshman year would not stand a chance against the person that is who I am right now. The power from Gable Stevenson. It's all about business now. Putting your dominance on the next person and keep going. Don't be satisfied. The villain act is long past. I think just being able to talk the talk and walk the walk right now is the main thing. I don't need the, the extra snowboarding no more. Some of his goals after college wrestling, right? You can see that he is an entertainer. First met Brock at a WWE match. It was crazy to see Lesnar in person. He came into practice one day and I was like, why is Lesnar here? Negum told me, oh, he's gonna practice with you. And it was crazy because I was like, Lesnar practice with me? What? I think right now his dream is that he wants to be in the WWE. I love acting. I just love being able to be myself in front of tens of thousands of people. Where Gable will end up in some years to come, holding the strap, winning the WWE Championship with, with a good crowd of people around me that I can share my story with. Gable Stevenson's 2021 season was unfathomable. Wow, look at that. It was unbelievable. The power, the legs of Stevenson. He accomplished everything everybody ever dreams of in one year. He goes from winning Big Tens, having a perfect season, wins the national championship, wins the Hodge, and then he goes on, wins the Olympic trials, and wins the Olympics. Gable's freshman year, he was a boy still. Once he became a man, he became in that unstoppable force that you saw over the course of 2021. So we know how good he was last year. He was really, really good. He's found new levels. Going into the Olympics, I'm just a 21-year-old guy that's, that's gonna go versus 33-year-old men. The finals probably couldn't been any more exciting. In the gold medal match, Gable Stevenson was up against Geno Petschavili of the country of Georgia, three-time reigning world champion. Gable's dominating through the first period. Second period comes out, he falls behind. It looks like it's over. I'm down eight to five and I'm like, geez, what am I gonna do with myself? So to actually score two takedowns, come back, get that win, this will be a finish that people remember and talk about forever. I threw up the two, and I was like, no way. And it wasn't even me, like, I won the gold medal. It was like, how I did it. When Egan was giving me the flag, I was like, no way. He went from being a really good college wrestler to an international superstar. The first time it really hit me, though, was in the Japanese airport in Tokyo. About 20 local Japanese people run up to Gable Stevenson. The first person who came up to him, she was an airport worker. She must have been 70 some years old. And Gable takes his gold medal and puts it around her neck. And then the swarm came. When I first met Gable, he was talking about Brock Lesnar and the amazement with the WWE. And that became something that he always had interest in getting into the entertainment world. When I came to Minnesota, my main goal was like, how can you be Gable, but also have like the, the roadmap that Brock took. 
when I sent out the little brief message about let's see where the road takes me, I mean, it was all just a setup to anticipate, anticipate. After Olympic Games, I went to McMahon, Dana White, and some NFL teams hit me up to, to see what was going on with Gable. Is he going to go to the WWE? Is he going to fight? Is he going to wrestle another year? Like, nobody knows. He can do whatever he wants. I remember after he won the Olympic gold medal the way that he did, the next morning waking up, walking, and talking, and thinking, you can't go out on a better note. This is a prime time to maybe enter the field of the WWE. He would tweet out certain things. I'd be like texting or calling him and be like, what are you talking about? Well, like, are you coming back or what? Everybody knew I want to go to the WWE. I just like the acting part, the showmanship, and long time coming, but I'm happy that it happened. In early September last year, Gable made the announcement that he was signing with the WWE. And that left a lot of people thinking, wow, he's not going to return to college. I don't owe Minnesota myself, but I feel like I owe all the fans that show up and want to watch me and, and sell out crowds. And that's what I feel like I owe back to the people. WWE gave me like the option to come back, but also like be with them. So just, just double dipping and, and making things happen. I'm on my phone and it like popped up and it was like the front page of everything. And I was like, oh, it's a big deal. Basically, without the NIL, I don't know if he'd be wrestling for the University of Minnesota this year. I came back just because of the history I had here. I didn't want to leave it and not finish the chapter here. He's paving the way for a lot of other, not just wrestlers, but student athletes around the country to enter into different deals that are historic. My senior year of college, I'm really dividing my time. Randomly, I'll have to fly out to somewhere for like morning to nighttime and come back. And it's crazy, but it is, it's a cool lifestyle, but it is something new. No doubt, Gable Stevenson has special treatment here. His special treatment is jumping on a jet to Miami or something like that. When practice is going, Gable's playing handball as a warm-up with the rest of our team. When him and I get scrapping, it's, I don't care if he's a gold medalist at that moment. He knew what it meant for our university, and he knew he had a platform and an opportunity to come back and change people's lives and continue to build the direction of this program. People come in here and ask about Brock Lesnar all the time, and now people are going to come in and ask about Gable Susan. My chapter's closing, not just with the team, but with wrestling, like amateur wrestling. As long as I can put on that last dance and win it one more time, then I'll be satisfied with that. The morning of the Olympic finals match, we all set our alarms early, probably 3.30, 4 a.m. I think for a lot of us, it was even hard to sleep a little bit. It was a great chance for us to get together as a team and then have Gable's family there as well. Gable was 21 years old at the Olympics. He was one of the youngest wrestlers ever to be in a gold medal match. We all get there, it's super exciting, but we're also nervous for him. Probably more nervous than Gable is in his own match. Gable looks like he's got it under control. He gets taken down, starts getting gut-wrenched, and we're like, oh no, it's over. And I'm sitting right behind his mom and dad and brother, and it's nerve-wracking for all of us. Come on. It's time to go, there's six seconds left, and this is a chance of a lifetime. I mean, this is when the miracle happens. His mom and dad start just screaming, jumping up and down. I mean, all of us can't even control our emotions. You can't really scream words, we're just screaming. Gable's dad, he pumps his fist and his wife went in for a hug. I think he, he was about this close to knocking her out, I think. He became 
an everyday household name across the country, not just in the wrestling world, but in all sorts of different spheres. Knowing what it's gonna do in his life and what it would do for our program going forward um, was a very emotional time. Me being able to come back is what I really want. I didn't want to leave the university. I wanted to come out for years and, and leave my legacy here. For him to come back and do it again this year when he could have easily just, just walked away, there's no doubt about it that he's put a spotlight on us as a university. How many times you get to see an Olympic gold medalist in a college uniform? I strongly believe Gable came back because he's got a bond with these guys here. He's a Minnesota kid. Deep down in his heart, he wants to see this program get back up to that national stage where we're winning team trophies again and winning national titles. We went from rebuilding a program my freshman year to being top seven in the country last year with a national champ and Olympic gold medalist. We're slowly getting back to how we were in the, the 2000s and 2010s. It really is kind of crazy because it is so unique to have a gold medalist on your team. And some of the guys on our team come from real small towns, have never been around an athlete like that. I come from a pretty big suburb in Indianapolis, but I've never been around an Olympian, never uh, you know, seen an athlete like that. He's so confident in himself that he believes he can you know, win again and probably win in bigger fashion than he did last year. He's accomplished everything in the world and you get to see what it takes to do that. We've talked a lot about how you see his confidence, you see the way he approaches the sport, and you guys need to learn from that. Some guys become kind of shells of their self when they step out on the mat, and Gable always becomes bigger than who he is. The Gable Show is on display right here. Yes. Another takedown, it's a clinic. I think some of his actual wrestling skills rub off but mainly like his mindset. It's a separation that has continued to widen. It gives guys the hopes of wrestling like Gable. It gives guys the hope of being like Gable. Wow, a standing ovation inside Carver Hawkeye Arena for Gable Stinson. Some of the guys want to be where he went and they want to achieve the same thing he's achieving, so they're definitely watching. And then there's other guys who probably, you know, skill level wise are not going to be Olympic gold medalists, but they'll always be able to say they're in the room training shoulder to shoulder with Gable Stevenson. What's up everybody, it's Gable here. And, uh, Today's a special day for me and all my teammates and everybody out there. To end my, my dual me career here at Minnesota, something special. But um, some things I'd like to let y'all know is that I'm forever grateful for the university and the program and the coaches that came through here. My family, my friends, just want to let everybody know that to, to never give up, your dreams are going to be close. You're going to accomplish everything you want, just like I have too. But hey, I still got one more match to go. So let's get on your feet, let's get turned up, because I'm about to put on the best show you've ever seen. Prime time, he is Gable Stevenson, a national champion. This is another grown man that can just push another grown man around the mat to a point where that guy just crumbles. When he wrestles his opponent, it's either you're going to roll over for me or I'm going to make you roll over for me. For Gable Stevenson, the trajectory he's on, it's only upward from here. One of the all-time greats. Putting your dominance on the next person and keep going. Don't be satisfied.